In this week's episode, they desperately want change in their rural village and they are doing something about it. But first, he's determined to lift his game even when circumstances are unfavorable. He was at the peak of his career when he plowed into a field in Guazulu Natal. Crushing at 180 kilometers an hour, no one thought Dave Lentil would survive. When he did, he was almost unrecognizable. Nearly a decade after the accident, miraculously, Dave is back at it, flying hundreds of people to their destinations daily. If Dave Lentil had things his way, he would trade places with an eagle. I've been brought up in a, an aviation family, as my dad is a glider pilot and so is my sister. So a gliding club airfield was my playground growing up. I had the freedom to do what I wanted at my open space, I was always outdoors. My teachers hated me because I'd always be looking out the window, looking at the clouds and thinking, I'd rather be up there than sitting in this classroom. Dave followed his dream and became a qualified pilot, chattering dignitaries around the world. It's a lovely morning, think what a beautiful day for flying. When a local company asked him to help it fly a plane, Dave couldn't resist the temptation. I was to take this airplane down to East London for an air show down there. But it wasn't to be. More than 5,000 feet off the ground, a relaxed Dave wouldn't have imagined the drama that was to unfold. I just hear an explosive crack and shudder and shaking. What had happened is I had a catastrophic engine failure. Alone in the air, he prepared for the worst. I was starting to sweat and the smoke was reducing my visibility inside the cockpit. His plane was completely out of control and gravity was pulling it down. At 180 kilometers an hour, Dave plowed through a field. This is what was left of the aircraft. After telling my wife the news, she collapsed. I picked her up and I said, we've got to go to St. Augustine's Hospital in Durban. David will be brought there. So he went to the hospital and we waited for him to arrive. Ellen Lentil was about to witness something no parent deserves. When I saw him there, you don't think it's, it's not very pretty. It was, David was in a mess. It's, I can still see it now. Initial X-ray scans painted a bleak picture. But when Dave showed signs of responding, doctors began working furiously in a desperate attempt to rebuild his body. 
They operated on his face before tackling his entire torso and limbs. His father, Alan, wouldn't leave his bedside, doing all he could to encourage him not to give in. I kept saying to him, David, you're going to fly against everybody else's opinion. I said, you're going to fly, but you're never going to fly unless you push yourself. After seven weeks in hospital, relying on life support and heavy sedatives, Dave was discharged. He spent time with a physiotherapist and was recovering well. Only after six months, he could sit up for the very first time since that fateful day in 2006. While still in a wheelchair, Dave's father asked his son to do the impossible. My dad gave me the challenge, you need to get back on an aeroplane. I looked at him and was like, really? <laughs> I looked at myself still covered in external fixators, I still had a catheter, and I'm like, you want to go and do what? And he says, no, you need to go and experience it so they don't lose it completely. Ridiculous as it sounded, Alan and his son drove to Virginia Airport in KZN. Dave was about to be back in the air for the first time in two years. My dad climbed in and um, said, right, son, you ready to go? And I said, well, okay, let's do it. The exercise was life-changing. Dave knew instantly that he had to be back behind the controls. Now, nearly a decade later, this inspirational man is doing exactly that. An astonishing pilot who not only defied the law of gravity, but also the voices that tried to convince him that he would never fly again. Hundreds of passengers today rely on Dave to safely charter them to their destinations, an experience that inspired him to write a book. He pushes himself to the ultimate until it's perfection. He's also a perfectionist. If he can't get it right, he'll push until he gets it right. There you have it. I think the word courageous doesn't begin to describe Dave Lentil's character. As always, we appreciate your feedback. Against all odds at enca.com, you can also be in touch with us on Twitter and Facebook. Still to come, young people in rural KZN now have a reason to dream big. <laughs>